Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. We're in my test world. So this is the D&D game engine 3.3.1 and we're looking at a mod today. We're looking at lock and key. So you can see on screen the mods I've got installed for this. Um, I've got item piles on because lock and key will work on doors, but it will also work on item piles. So um, you, you may not use item piles, you might just use the lock and key function for doors, which is absolutely fine. But we can use it for the item piles, as I said. So um, I've got that included so we can have a little look-see. All right, what does it do? Well, uh, lock and key. So it's to do with locks and it's to do with keys. <laughs> I know. Genius, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm in my testing world. Let's have a look at a door up here. So I'm in as the game master, of course. Now, right-clicking on any door will lock it. We know that. That's normal foundry behavior. Um, and Haley can come along and she can try to open it. And, you know, she can't open that door because it's locked and she can't go through. I mean, obviously, I mean, there's a DM, so I can bypass that by right-clicking on it. But player characters can't. It's normally locked. But what happens if I want Haley and her party to be exploring this place and I want them to find the key, not a key, but the key that unlocks this particular door. So ideally what we want is we want a item, the key, that is linked to this door and enables us to do that. That's what locking key does for us. So again, I'm in as the GM. Now if I right click on this while holding down shift, it brings up this little box. It says key creation, and I can name this key. So I can call it anything I want, um, and you might just want to leave it as key, and they could end up collecting a whole bunch of keys and not know which one's for which, but that's fine. Now, I can drop it into a particular folder, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to create. If I look in my items tab now, it's created kitchen key. Let's whiz over to Haley in as a player uh, and here she is okay so I'm in as a player now Haley can walk up to this door uh, I've left it unlocked lock it <laughs> shut up uh, and Haley can attempt to get through this door now obviously as a player she can't uh, open that door by right clicking it's saying no matching key oh sorry Haley, not going to happen the door's locked you don't have the right key off you go go find it uh, now of course in her travels she may find that key so if we take this item and we drop it into her inventory it's now here kitchen key now what happens when Haley attempts to do exactly the same thing so left click it tells her it's locked right click the door is now unlocked. Haley can open it, which is fantastic. All right, but let's prove this a little bit further. Let's lock that door. Um, we've got another door. We can lock that door as well. Now, they're just normally locked uh, with no key or anything like that. And as you would suspect, even though Haley's got the kitchen key, if she comes goes over here and tries to open this door, it's locked. And if she tries the right click to unlock it, no matching key so that kitchen key will only open the kitchen door which is exactly what you would want it to be so um that's just my summoning circles so again in as the dm if i hold down right shift and i right click it can't talk and type it say i can't <laughs> i can't type anyway summon room key whatever I want to call it. Now, bearing in mind that the players will end up with this item, so you might not want to call it summon room key. They find a key and go, hang on a minute, there's a summoning room around here somewhere. But just like before, I can just give that to Haley. She's now got two keys. Uh, and going back over to her as a player, once again, she can unlock that and go through. Now, interestingly, she can now lock it as well because she's got the key. Now, if Nundro tries to unlock that, Haley hasn't got control of Nundro, it will be locked for Nundro because he does not have the key. Interesting, huh? But what you can do, just so that you're aware, is you can duplicate the key that works. So you can have more than one key that opens one door. 
You can also, if you want to fiddle around with it, you can also have one key that opens multiple doors. So you could lock this one, and as long as you give it the same ID as the key Haley has, how easy is it to see that ID actually? Open. No, don't use the kitchen key. Um, does it actually give it to you on here? It doesn't, um, but you can use the UUID, so up next to the name, you can use that reference there um, to update and say that reference item will unlock this door. So you can do that if you want to, have a fiddle around with it. Um, but in essence, I mean, you know, you may want to do that, you may not want to. But if we look at things like the death house, um, my party spent quite a while wandering around trying to find how to unlock a door, not realising that they had the key because it was in a container that they had picked up. One of the party members just pocketed the container without ever opening it. But you could have, it's like, actually, they open that container and they find the key. He pops it in and they go, oh, we've got a key. So now when they come to a locked door, they know that they've got a key and they can try it. And things like the death house searching for that key what a lovely moment for rather than as the dm say oh yeah you find the key very traditional and nothing wrong with that but for them to actually find the item the key and then they kind of go oh well i'll unlock the door it's like who's got the key you know who's got the key one player has got it um so you can absolutely use it like that and of course you can create a potentially a whole maze of locked doors and things where they've got to use the right key and stuff like that so that's all really cool and that's all really quite straightforward and lovely uh, but what about item piles so uh, let's make sure I'm back in as the DM for this um, I've created three item piles Okay, one of them's got gold ring in it, one of them's got an ivory hairbrush, one of them's got a silver sword in it. Uh, and these are just normal item piles. I went to configure item pile, in other settings I changed them to container. Um, we have got a video on item piles, so if you're kind of like, what the heck are you want about item piles, go and have a look at that. It's in the add-on playlist. Uh, it's going to be down a fair bit now, but uh, it still works as per that video not an awful lot's changed so all I've done is I've created um, this as a container uh, and I've given it a closed image and an open image um, and I've done the same for all three of these just so they all look the same for us um, we don't need to do anything else in here okay we can leave all of that as is uh, and we can in fact we can leave that here so again these should all be, if we right click, they should all be locked, which they are. Those padlocks are all showing that these are locked. So if we whiz back over to Haley here, uh, Haley can attempt to open this and it will tell her she's got no matching key because she hasn't. It's not going to tell me on that one. Um, but what I can do is, of course, as the DM is just like doors, I can. Uh, right click on it by holding down shift right click and I can create a let's call it chest key one really imaginative right so we've now got three keys we've got a kitchen key summon room key and we've got chest key one so if I drop that into Haley, Haley now owns that pop back over here because obviously as the DM I can overrule everything so uh, that's why I keep switching back to Haley. So now if Haley attempts to uh, right click on this. Now I know that's a really weird sound but we'll get to that. But Haley can now lock and unlock this chest and once it's unlocked if she clicks on it to open it she can get hold of that gold ring and that carnelian um, and it's changed the i mean my images are rubbish for this but i've just got it changing image that so you can see that is now open and she's can access stuff and when she leaves she can leave that open um, and then she can lock it again so poor nundro comes along he hasn't got the key he can't open that so if you want to have a room or something you know it might be your party headquarters whatever it may be where they have a personal stash, a personal chest they can leave their stuff in, you can give them a key for it. And that means the rest of the party can't nick their stuff <laughs> unless they pickpocket that key from them or something like that. But it just gives you a really nice way to be able to set up different item piles, different chests or foot lockers or whatever it is. Um, 
and it might be that we know it's in that guy's footlocker. We've got to get the key, and oh, who's got the key? He wears it round his neck, and there's suddenly this whole um, mini adventure of just trying to get hold of the key to get into that chest, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, hayley has got a key. Move over here. Oh, on the. Uh, where am I in? I'm in. I'm in as Haley. Right, brilliant. <laughs> Shush. Um, so Haley can't open this because she doesn't have uh, the right key. So that one she can lock and unlock, but there is no key for this one because it's not set up. So let's do that. So we can set this one up again. We can just shift right click. Let's call it chest chest key two. And we can create that nice and easy. Um, but we're not going to give it to Haley, Okay, so she hasn't got that key. So when we pop back over here, she can... It says no matching key, Okay, which we saw with that first box as well. So what can Haley do about this? Now, I have given Haley. Hopefully this works. I've given her some thieves tools. If she shift right clicks on it now... It's now saying that this can't be picked. So this chest is a not pickable and she has no matching key. So she's not going to be able to get in there. Um, and it can't be broken either. So haley has got three options. Right click on it. It will try to open it with the key if she's got it. Shift right click. It will try and lock pick it if it's pickable. Alt right click and it will try she'll try to smash it but she can't do any of those things because this chest is not set up for those for that particular thing okay so i've accidentally opened it hang on a second let's go back over here there we go right so let's lock that again um and how did i let's configure the pile but what I want to do is I want to configure. Is it oh was it open sheet? It wasn't open sheet. Give me a second while I refresh myself of where it was. I don't think it was in here. There we go. <laughs> Playing around, I forgot where it was. So as the DM, if I right click on this and go to the cog uh, to bring up the token configuration, we've got this extra bit L and K lock and key. Look at the size of this mini menu. Uh, don't be overwhelmed. It's quite straightforward. Is this lockable? It's either yes it is or it's not. Uh, is it locked? Uh, well, yeah, we want it locked. Thank you very much. Um, this is where that key ID is. There we go. It's right there. So any of the keys that you create, you can use that. And you can see IDs which can lock and unlock this separated by a colon or if you want multiple keys required, so you've got to have key one and key two because it's a double lock on this chest, um, you can get it to do that as well, which is really nice. Is there a password that is needed to open this rather than a key? So if you've got something like a cryptex or something like that where they have to find a password written down on a parchment in the library or something, they have to enter a password, you can have them enter a password instead of having a physical key. How amazing is that? Uh, and now there's loads of settings around the lock itself. So is that lock jammed? So if it's jammed, then you might not be able to lock pick it. Now, this is where it says lock DC. So this is the difficulty class. So the DC for picking the lock. If it is minus one, which it is by default, you cannot pick this lock. And we saw Haley; it said it's not pickable. Let's change that DC to 15. So now we can do a lock picking with a DC of 15. Now, do you need a special lock pick? So you could create a special type of lock pick. Maybe it's a magical one or something like that, that you have to use for this lock. Normal lock picks won't work. It's really complex. There's loads and loads of stuff you can do with this mod. Most of the time, you're going to say it's locked and it needs a key. Or it's locked, there is no key, but you can lock pick it. Um, but there's also this lock break DC. Now, I'm going to leave that as unbreakable for this one. 
but I have got a, uh, a pick lock DC of 15. Okay, so you can see there's some other options around here around the lock picking success, how many times they're allowed to attempt it. Um, so here, so attempts left, how many lock picking attempts are made. I've got it defaults to unlimited. Keep trying as much as you want. It's going to take longer. The guards are more likely to turn up whatever you would like there. Um, and you've got an option. Can it be circumvented? In other words, if, uh, if if this lock can be circumvented by effects such as the knock spell. Now, apart from very special cases, that should always be yes. Because if you say, oh yeah, the knock spell doesn't work on 80% of, of locks. <laughs> Why the hell is the wizard taking it? <laughs> so don't be too mean. Now that weird sound for my locks, look, lock sound here. I got it set on futuristic, but there's a whole bunch of them here. Let's change this one to metal because it, cause not only is it said metal, it's got it's got our metal horns as well. So let's uh, let's pick that one for this lock. Um, and so uh, we should get a different sound when we lock and unlock this one. Bearing in mind, I haven't produced the well, I have produced the key, but I've not given it to Haley. Um, there's also things like the lock picking formula. If you want to change it, what is the override lock pick formula? Yeah, oh, sorry. Do you want to use this formula instead of the default one? We'll come back to some of the settings on like the default stuff if you want to. Do we have a specific formula we want to use for breaking locks? You might want an athletics or you might want a straight strength roll, whatever it may be that you want to do for that. And again, you can override your default one. So you've got a default lock pick um, formula and you've got a default break open formula but you can very specifically say well actually for this chest yes you can break it open but it uses a different formula whatever reason you might want that is there um pickpocket override pickpocket we'll have a look at pickpocket possibly separately um so let's update that okay so now we've got our ability to lock pick this so let's go back to Haley over here as a player Whew, I know there's a lot isn't there so um, if we just right click on this we've got no matching key shift right click we're gonna roll a dice and player one Haley rolled a two she failed that let's try it again we failed it again Hooray! we finally made it oh we got a natural 20 on there so you can see that that DC is being applied and now this is open and Haley can go and play with it. There we go. She can get her ivory hairbrush, etc. from here, which is great. It's now open. So we can use a key or we can lock pick it, which is really, really cool. Let's try this chest over here. Here we go. We go to the cog and we're going to go to L and K. Uh, and we're going to say, um, is it lockable? Yes, it well, it's lockable and it is currently locked. That's fine. Uh, lock DC, we're going to leave that. We're going to have a break DC of 15 instead for this one. So we're going to try and break this one open rather than anything else. Uh, we've got futuristic. Let's change that to uh, let's change that to stone. Just so we've got a different type of sound. Um, we're not going to override any of those bits. Brilliant. Okay, so we've now got this one here, which is lock, lock pickable, if you haven't got the key. This one here, which you can't lock pick or smash. This one that you can use the key or you can smash, but you can't lock pick it. Back to Haley. Move over here. So if we right click, no matching key. If we shift right click, it cannot be picked. If we alt right click, we rolled a 19. We have smashed that open. And you saw very briefly the little message saying that that has now been opened. So Haley can get at that silvered short sword. So, of course, for most chests, you're probably going to have a, a key for it and a lock pick DC and a smash open DC for most things. Um, you know, you might have those DCs quite high if it's a particularly tough chest. Of course, you can eventually smash it open. It just might take a while and it might be very difficult. But you, you, most things you can unless it's magically protected. And if it's magically protected, that might be exactly where you say you can't pick it. You can't smash it. You have to have the very specific magic key. And we can already do that.
So how cool is this, the fact that we can do this? And I believe, unless I've made a terrible, terrible mistake, you can do very similar things with the doors. So we know we can create the key, um, but can we, and I'm asking that as a question because I didn't actually look at it, can we set the DC for picking locks of the doors? But let's look at some of the settings for this mod. Again, there's loads of them, um, 50 apparently. <laughs> So quick controls is about using the um, the right click um, shift and um, and alt keys to be able to do stuff. Do we allow players um, to lock stuff as well as unlock it? Um, do things start locked? So newly registered locks start already locked. Okay, you, you don't have to, but you might want to do that. Uh, the distance over which you can use a lock. In other words, you can set that to say, well, you can't unlock it from across the other side of the room. That makes sense. What's our default lock sound? Well, we we saw we can pick this anyway. But you can set that default one. Or always open stuff that you own, allow interactions, show, uh, show the interaction DCs if you want them, show all lock interactions. So always show all interactions um, for locks. It says for the evil GM in you. I'm not sure why that makes you evil. <laughs> not sure. Uh, prevent the, when paused. The type of items. So type of key items that you might want. So you might have other things you want to use for that. Uh, the key creation menu, of course. We've seen that. We had that pop up. Um, you can have an option ID on there. There's just tons of stuff here. Tons of stuff that you can customize that works for you. Um the crit system, natural one, which is a critical fumble, and 20, but you can use different ones for this purpose if you wish to. Uh, and when you're actually setting up those locks, when you're actually in here, in this menu, there are things to do that what happens if you get a, you know, like jamming locks and things like that in here. This all relates to things, of, get rid of that. Of things that happens so remove a lock pick on a critical fail so you break your thieves tools that's it you haven't got it anymore um, if you jam if you fail your lock pick on a critical fail uh, sorry if you critically fail your lock picking attempt it jams the lock you can't pick it anymore so there's a number of options you can choose to use and customize for your game however you want that to work your critical fumble or lock pick that's it it's stuffed you're never picking that again. Your choice is to find the real key or smash it open. That's it, which of course is noisy. Um, keys can't be used on jam locks. So you can say, well, actually, because you've jammed it with your lock, failed lock picking attempt, the actual key won't work anymore. Um, well, you need to be careful that you don't accidentally lock people completely away from, you know, really important areas of your dungeon or, or whatever. Amount of times you can attempt a lock pick. Now it's starts off default minus one so you can just keep trying and trying and trying um, but you might set that and say you're going to get one attempt or you only get three attempts whatever it might be auto reset lock pick attempts um, so when you relock when you reshut it and relock it it resets the lock pick attempts and this is where it's got that lock um, picking formula this is the default d20 plus your dex modifier uh, plus your tool proficiency uh, and any thief bonus that you've got from that. So this is the formula it's going to use by default. You know, we could override that formula if we wanted to. So you might have this as your default formula for everything, but you can change it. And we've got the same for the breaking locks. A 1d20 plus your strength modifier plus your um, proficiency. But you might want to change that, saying, actually, I just want them to use that athletic skill rather than their strength. You can do that. You change it here for everything, or you can change it on the individual uh, locked item, which is really, really cool. Um, default lock break DC. So you might say, well, generally things are a DC of 10 or DC of 15, whatever you work for, whatever you, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, and the default lock for lock picking you gain, you might say, well, most locks are a DC 10. They're not that difficult. Your most common locks, if you've got tools and stuff, it's quite easy. Uh, make broken locks unlockable. Yep, if you've broken that lock, you can't then lock, lock it again. So if you smash your way into a chest, you can't then 
you know um, if you forced that lock you break the lock you're not going to be able to lock it again so while there's loads and loads of things in here uh, lock circumvention passwords knock so keywords identify such as the knock spell allow you to circumvent but you can add extra spells in here and things like that if you want to so there's a lot a lot of options but actually they all kind of make sense they're quite well written which is good and it's because there's so many of them that are related to you know either picking locks or smashing locks or you know keys and things like that so lots of options now here it talks about the lock pick uh, sorry the pick pocketing so the formula should be used when you're trying to pick pocket from somebody now i'm going to check that in a moment and get that working so we're going to take a we're going to have a little bit of an edit while I go and play with that and then come back for that. Um, but I can't hold everything in my head in one go. So we're going to do that in two bits. But yeah, loads and loads of options here. So control scheme, right click, um, right click plus the key. So shift, right click, um, alt, right click. So you can change that if you want to. But it's really, really cool. And I can see loads of, um, of places where locking doors and needing a key for it is going to be really really cool <laughs> i think cool is the word um it just adds that extra layer and where we can lock chests and things and you've got to find the right key for it um i what i really like is the fact that you've got this lock picking kind of built in so you know they, they can actually do that right so i'm going to go look at the pickpocketing part and see if i can get that to work and i will see you back in a brawl for you guys almost instantaneously all right, yes, back. <laughs> so um, I forgot to show you how to do doors as well. I'll come back to doors for the break DC and lock picking DC. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Pickpocketing though. Okay, so let's take Nundro here. If I go to Nundro, so to his token um, configuration, just like with item piles, because item piles are an actor, right? Um, we can go to his settings and we've got a locking key here so this is on nundro can we lock pick nundro <laughs> i mean that doesn't make any sense but what we can do is we can put in a specific pick pocket dc for an individual character if we want to so in the actual settings of course so we just whizzed through all of these we did have wherever that was um pick pocket uh pick pocket DC default DC for pickpocketing so you can set it here and say the default is 15 yeah but you can also come in here and override that for an individual if you want so to pickpocket Nundro for whatever reason he's easier to pickpocket than anybody else so let's say Haley, who is not remotely a rogue she wants to pickpocket Nundro so Haley just sorry, sneaks up to him and if we double left click on Nundro because we don't own that token, Haley doesn't own it, you saw that it immediately with the double left click she attempted to pickpocket. She rolled a nine, it failed. So then repercussions. Let's try that again. Uh, she's failed again. I told you she's not a rogue. She's not good at this stuff. Yay, there we go. So we've successfully got our pickpocket roll and it has given us everything nundro owns now you can limit this uh, and it's one of the options and say actually you can only pickpocket things that have the loot tag so um you can't pickpocket his miners pick but you could pickpocket um you know a, a gems and things like that so we've got all of his stuff here and it says take from nundro's inventory lands in Haley's inventory what is she going to attempt to take? Well, let's let's see uh, what's he got that Haley won't have. Um, a two-handed warhammer, for example. Now we've got this little handy button here, uh, and if I click that, it's going to just say, "Yeah, I'm going to take that." And let's steal his clothes as well. So these are changed to one of one, and we can take selected. Let's look in Haley's inventory, and we should see we've now got a two-handed warhammer, and we've got some clothes. So we have successfully pickpocketed. If we come back and look at Nundro, interesting, he's still got clothes and his Warhammer. So it hasn't removed them from him. Now, you're not going to be pickpocketing pick pocketing off of each individual, you know, off your other party members normally. 
Um, so I'm not worried about the fact that that doesn't automatically take it from Nundro. Um, might do from an NPC, but he's a player character. That might be the issue there. But yeah, pickpocketing. So all she needs to do is double left click on him. Um, as the DM, it won't work, of course, because it's going to select the other token. But if we're in as Haley, all we need to do is double left click. And there we go. She succeeded again. And I can nick all of his stuff for him. Thank you very much. I'll take all of your gold. Lovely jubbly. Uh, and now Haley has got those extra items. So really, really simple. Right, the last thing I want to show you is the door setup. So um, we can create a key just by doing shift and right click. We saw that already. But if we want to set up this door, we need to go to those lock and key things. So if we go to our select and we select this door, we've got this lock and key option here. So this is where we're going to say, yes, is it lockable? Um, does it automatically lock when you close it? So a lot of these similar things, we can put a password on this door. Um, we can say that this is jammed. This is where we can say, well, it doesn't at the moment, but now we can say this has got a lock DC of 10 and it's got a break DC of 15. So we can pop those in. Update this. Let's go back to Haley again. Okay, and we have just, um, has she still got the kitchen key? Because it's going to suddenly work, isn't it? Let's um, let's get rid of her keys. Let's get rid of her kitchen key. Let's just delete it for the moment. Okay, so she hasn't got a key for this. I need to lock it as the DM. You muppet. Thank you very much. So now when Haley comes up, she tries to open this door. It's locked. We right click. No matching key. Shift right click. We can now attempt to lock pick it. As you see, she failed and then she succeeded and now she can go through. So really, really easy to set up. Uh, she can't lock it again because uh, failed to pick lock, failed to pick lock, failed to pick lock. It's already uh, it's already open. So I'm just wondering what happens when she actually makes this roll. So she can. Uh, that's good. I like that. She can pick a lock to lock it again. Okay. So now can she... Alt right click. She's going to now attempt to bash it open and she's succeeded. So you can set up your doors and your item piles to be pickable with its own DC, uh, to be smashable with its own DC, or to require a specific key with its own unique key, which is really cool. And you can, if you want to, have pickpocketing set up so that your players can attempt to pickpocket. Now, you may want to use a different way of doing pickpocketing. You may want to, uh, you know, do an opposed roll and things like that. But if you are happy to have a flat DC, you might want to set it a bit higher than 10. Um, I just set it, you know, for those purposes so we could actually succeed. Uh, you can do that. Really, really nice module. Am I going to use this module? I think the answer is probably yes, because I really like the idea of them wandering around and I got rid of my items and actually finding that's because it's on Haley <laughs> um, and actually finding the appropriate key. Now, of course, with any of these keys, I can change the image to whatever I want. So, you know, you could have it, you know, um, or whatever it might be. It might be that, um, you know, you change it for a particular gem and they've got to have, find a particular gem that fits in the hole that will unlock it. Um, and you might say that it's you can't pick that lock. You can't use magic spells to open that lock. Only the very specific magic gem inserted into the appropriate um, slot will unlock that door, uh, which is cool because you've created that and you've automated that really really nicely so anyway i hope that's been useful it's a pretty cool one this i like this one it's really nice um yeah happy days enjoy have fun uh this is by the way this is uh this does work with pathfinder 2 um as well you don't need item piles for pathfinder i don't believe because it's kind of got that built in already um but it should work in the very very similar way to this um of course you don't need to use item piles with this you can just do your doors but if you want if you're using item piles anyway like i am um it works it's brilliant anyway Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care and I will see you 
in the next one.